welcome to As Goes Wisconsin. Thank you for joining us. Greg Bach is here with me in studio. Kelvin is on the board. You can always chime in. You can call and or text at 844-967-2789-844-96. Party! Thank you, Greg Bach. Just a reminder, too, if you want to watch some hoops tonight, well, watch, <laughs> listen to some hoops tonight. Wisconsin is at Providence with a 5 p.m. tip-off. You can listen to the game at WFHR Homegrown Radio in Wisconsin Rapids on WRCE News from the Center in Richland Center and WLAK Lake Air in Amory. I love I just I, I love radio call letters when they like make a thing. A thing. It's yeah. a thing. Yeah. Uh, so you can listen to the game tonight starting at five o'clock, the tip off Wisconsin at Providence on several civic media radio stations. Uh, coming up at 1130, Johnny Watermelon, our colleague here, is going to join us in studio. He's heading up to Deer Camp on Thursday, and we started talking off air just about Deer Camp stories and thought it would be fun to hear from Johnny and from you. Your Deer Camp stories at 844-967-2789. Start thinking about it now. We will be taking your calls after 1130. Stick around for that. Right now, though, though uh, the Better Business Bureau is out warning us about an old scam that's got a new twist. It's called the Can You Hear Me scam. Are you oh, familiar with this? Yes. You know of you know of the can can you hear me scam? Yes. This has long been used to coerce businesses into buying office supplies that they never actually ordered. And now they're in, they're targeting people, just individual people. So BBB says that consumers say the calls they're getting now are about vacation packages, cruises, warranties. I always get the warranty calls and even Medicare cards. So far, nobody's reported any losing any money, but they keep at it until until it hits. Right? There's there will eventually be someone who's going to fall for this. I I no longer get warranty calls. I get text messages about USPS. My inbox. It's not phone calls, so I guess it may not count. It's still a scam. It's still a scam. I get text. If you look at my blocked and spammed a folder on my phone it is enormous 50 texts of this is the usps your package has arrived you must contact us right now and it, yeah I, I i went from i went from um from just the the typical like oh your car warranty is out blah, 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 blah. sure now this this is their jam with me and i think it happened because i fell for it once i woke up one christmas morning i got a text message it said oh your package didn't arrive and I clicked on it. I'm like, all right, cool. I'll just give my. I put in all my credit card oh, information. Oh, Greg, no. And within ten minutes, I realized what I had done. And I went and I clicked through the link again. And I saw the link. I'm like, this is not the United States Postal Service. So I got in my car. I sped to my bank and I closed out everything that was attached to it. And luckily, nothing happened. You're you're fortunate. Good to, very good to go. Because, you know, they can drain your stuff immediately. Oh, absolutely. And it was about 20 minutes from realization to taking care of. But, man, whew, now it, oh, I, it, I, I, oh, and, oh. And isn't it awful, that, that feeling that you get the five minutes after you send that information off, and it's like all of a sudden you get this icky, sick stomach feeling mm -hmm. like I think I just did a really stupid thing yep and then you got to deal with yeah you got to deal with the panic and trying to fix it and then the utter frustration and humil humiliation humiliation in yourself right you're like oh I, I i thought i was a smart person. and that's the thing is you're not dumb for falling for it it just we're just thrown so, so much, much information that sometimes you click on the wrong thing and all of a sudden kaboom now you have malware yeah we're talking about the better business bureau is out with a new warning about an old scam with a new twist. It's called the Can You Hear Me scam. And I think it's this is targeted for people who are my age and older. Mm -hmm. I'm 63. And I, you know, old people still answer their phones. And so here's how it goes in the original version. Your phone rings, you answer it, and almost immediately they ask, can you hear me? So the whole goal is to get you to say yes. Yep. Which we do almost instinctively. You know, sometimes the, the caller will say, I'm having problems with my headsets, you know, fumbling around a little bit. Can you hear me? And what they're what they're waiting for is for you to say yes. Now, the trouble with that is this caller could be a robocall 
who is recording your conversation and that yes that you gave can later be edited to make it sound like you authorized a major purchase. Think about that. Trust it's me. It's terrifying. I think about it more than I should, honestly, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So in this new version, the caller may say, is this Greg Bach? Or some other question where, where your answer would be a simple yes. So some recent examples. He waited for me to answer yes to, did I get my new Medicare card? I was set with all my cards. I told him so. He just hung up. I redialed the number to see if it was Medicare. There was no such number in service. Yep. Another one of these, can you hear me, robocall? The caller asked if I could hear him. And when I said yes, I believe my response was recorded. Another complaint, I got a call from an unknown number. I had been applying for a lot of jobs, so I answered it. The caller said, hello. I said, hi. The, call, the woman said, hello, can you hear me? I said, yes, this is Greg Bach. This and then the thing. caller disconnected. Yeah. I tried to call it back, but it wouldn't connect. It said the number was not valid. Oh, so yeah. once they got you recorded saying that, yes, they can edit it. And then who knows what they can buy. That's. And, and rack it up on your cards. That is one of the reasons why I don't, I don't take any phone calls. That, that you don't are, recognize? Yeah, my phone has like, there's three layers of security. Like there's one where you, um, you call Jane Matinair mm -hmm. and it says Jane Matinair. I know who you are. That's your phone number. I say hello. Next level is if it's not sure, if my phone's not sure, it will allow me to screen the call. So I'll press a button and I'll say, Google is screening this call because it's coming from an unknown number. Please state who you are and what you're calling about. It'll like, and then send me a little thing saying, hey, it's Jane Matinair. I need, I need to pick you up for lunch. I'm calling from another number. Okay. And then finally, the third one, it, when it just knows it's a scam call, it'll immediately screen it out and block the number for me. Oh, that's nice. It's amazing. I mean, I, I, oh, I have hundreds of blocked numbers on my phone now. So what the BBB suggests that we do is, like you just said, use caller ID to screen your calls. Yep. Don't answer unfamiliar numbers. If, if it's important and you know these people, they're going to leave you a message. Correct. Right? Correct. Uh, just hang up. Yes. If someone calls and says, can you hear me? Or is this Greg Bach? Don't answer yes, just no. hang up. And of course, as, as we become more aware and more suspicious, the scammers change their tactics, right? So it, you, you, have to be, you have to be a little suspicious, unfortunately. You just do. You just, yeah. I mean, unfortunately, that's where we're at right now. And I don't want, I, I was trying to find a, a word that wasn't suspicious, but yeah, you got to, just got to be a little more. Suspicious. Cautious. Dang it. Cautious. cautious. There you go. There cautious. you go. Cautious. You like cautious better? That's much better. All right. Better. We're happy yeah. with cautious. 844 967 2789. 844 96 Party. Have you fallen for a scam? How did it work? How did, what was the resolution? We have Fred from Cottage Grove is on the line. Good morning, Fred. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, I get those calls too. And I always say, uh, who's calling? And they immediately hang up. Oh, they just, it's like, whoop, I'm not even going there. Yeah, it's, they, yeah, because they, yeah, a lot of times if, if my, I've got Verizon and that identifies the caller, a lot of times it's from some location that I have no idea where it's from or anything else. And if I, I usually don't answer them. If it's important, they'll leave a message. Right. Mm -hmm. know, but, uh, exactly. Otherwise, if, if I do answer it, I'll just say who's calling. So do you, you've got no matter the, if they just said said something, just who's calling, and then I'll hang up. So you've gotten this one in particular, Fred, where they say, "Is this Fred?" And then you just say, "Who's calling?" And then they hang up. Whatever, whatever they they say, they say, "Well, I'm from Medicare or whatever else or something else." I said, "Who's calling?" And they'll hang up. Well, good for you. Thank you for calling, Fred. 844-967-2789, 844-96-PARTY. If you want to share a scam that you have been a victim of or how you handle them, uh, like Fred, uh, Better Business Bureau says if this happens to you, you should make a note of the number and then report it to them so they can uh, they can keep track of it and help warn other people. Uh, scam tracker information with government and law enforcement agencies, so they can use everything they have to track down these companies. I don't know how often they actually ever catch these people. I mean, I think it's almost because 
because you said you said the a couple of the examples that they left which is you know they'll they'll use ghost phone numbers essentially they'll commandeer your phone number for a moment use it for a call and then boom it's gone i that happened to me once where <coughs> excuse me someone called me i almost said my phone number over the air my god um my it came up as like two numbers away from my phone number i was like this is very odd that's strange so i picked it up and there was nothing there so i turned it off or i hung up and then i called the number back and guy goes goes hello i'm like hi you called me like i i didn't call you i'm like you didn't call me at all and then i found out what happens is people can use phone numbers that are already in service as a ghost number call you and then either it's a it's a number that leads nowhere or it's somebody else that's the scary thing wow that is honestly that is the reason why i no longer answer any phone calls that i don't recognize if their name isn't in my contacts i do not answer it you can text me or you can leave a message but i'm not taking your call well as fred said if it's important if it's important they'll leave a message exactly and so it, it that's the easiest i guess and simplest way uh to protect yourself better business bureau also says that you can join the do not call registry which you, i have done but i it it doesn't it's a very narrow it's a very narrow, narrow scale of, of who can who has to abide by that it's it's fine but it's not it's definitely a, not a stopping issue it's a just a stop gap if you will and check your bank and credit card statements regularly Heck yeah for unauthorized charges the one that i fell for was actually an email and it was either i don't remember if it was my amazon account or my hbo account or something and your credit card is not working all of these things and i was a sucker and i fell for it and i'll tell you what happens when we come back all right you're listening to as goes wisconsin stay with us and you can share with us too at 844-967-2789 you're listening to the civic media radio network good morning welcome to as goes wisconsin jane matt Nair in for Kristen bride greg bach with me in studio calvin is on the board you can always chime in, text, and or call at 844-967-2789. Just a reminder, too, tomorrow morning, 1033, Kristen will be joining us from home, checking in. I was just, I was in the last, in the last part, just before, I was like, wait a minute, is Kristen going to be on the show tomorrow? Tomorrow, 1033. Maybe we'll see Frankie Lou. We'll see how that goes. I did get to see her on Saturday. Nice. Was it adorable? It was adorable. She is, she is perfect, <laughs> essentially. And then when she starts crying, I can leave. So it's really great. <laughs> <laughs> this is yours. This Remember, this baby is your baby. I'm going to go do something irresponsible now. Yep. So join us tomorrow morning at 1033. Stick around. Also, we want to hear your Deer Camp stories. Johnny Watermelon, our friend and colleague here at Civic Media, is heading up to Deer Camp on Thursday. And he's going to come in and share the uh, appropriate for air. The AFA? Yes. Yes. Nice. Uh, the appropriate for air deer camp stories. And we would love to hear from you as well coming up at 1133. Right now that we're just talking about this new warning from the Better Business Bureau about a new twist on an old scam. The can you hear me scam where you say yes. And then essentially they can record your yes and edit it out and then use that to make purchases. The new twist on this is they they call and say, is this Greg Bach? And you say yes. yes. And then away they go. So what's, here's a weird thing. <laughs> what stops someone from recording us right now? You say, you say, is this Greg Bach? I say, yes, on the radio. Someone just puts their recorder. Are you trying to help this bad people? I don't know. I mean, like, trust me. Do you think I'm the first one to ever think of it? <laughs> you think I'm the first, like, you know, like I, I thought I came up with the idea for let it be the record, but I didn't come up with it. The Beatles came up with it before. Greg Bach getting us, putting us all at risk. Thank you, Greg Bach. No, I'm kidding. A texter from the 262 listening on WAUK. We screen our calls. As the last caller said, if it's important, they'll leave a message. Absolutely. Yeah. Once in a while for fun, I will answer and make fart noises into the phone. Sometimes it's just the little things. Is this Greg Bach? <laughs> what do you think? It's, it's the little things in life that bring joy. 844-967-2789 if you want to join us. Tom from McFarland is on the line. Good morning, Tom. We're talking scams. Hi, uh, thanks for taking my call. Yeah, I received the scam where uh, the caller came up as Rock County Sheriff Department. Uh oh. And when I answered, they, uh, you know, he, he said he was a detective and he's calling because of a failure to appear. 
that uh, I was supposed to be in court. And because I failed to appear, that now there is a warrant for yep. my arrest. And at the time, I'm thinking, like, wow, you know, I didn't even remember we were receiving this. And because, you know, he came up as Rock County Sheriff and he gave me his badge number, you, you initially think that this is legit. Oh, sure. But then I started thinking, well, why would they have a detective assigned to a failure to appear case? And you talk about low priority. And then when you said, I can take care of this by having a fine or paying that fine, by just coming down to uh, the area, the courthouse with gift cards, <laughs> then I knew right away. It's like, uh, I don't think that they're going to be needing gift cards at Rock County Courthouse. Boy, um, they were doing so well, too, Tom, right? Up to that point, they we were take, doing pretty good. We yeah. take cash, Bitcoin, or Quiznos <laughs> gift cards. Come down to the back alley of the police department and bring Quiznos gift yep. cards. <laughs> oh, that is so funny, Tom. That reminds me. Thank another, you so much for sharing. That reminds me of another scam that was happening where I don't know if this happened to you or to you, Calvin. But you get a phone call, or a vo it was a voicemail. It would be like, "The FBI are on their way to your house right now to execute a warrant. If you need, to, if you want to be safe, you give us a call with your information." And it's not just like my voice; it's like a robotic, weird voice. It's okay. it's, it's kind of terrifying because you feel like you're in some sort of you know post apocalyptic. Dystopian, yeah, exactly. Dystopian. Like, and bring every gallon of water you can find. Jim in Appleton checking in on the text line. Years ago, I got hit by a very sim similar scam. It took me no longer to say it. Uh, I no longer say yes. I answer with it is when I'm asked if it's me oh. or correct when they're looking for a yes. See, I thought about that too. Is like correct could still get you in trouble. Or, or with yeah, I thought affirmative or correct could do that. I, I, you know, go with the 40 year old virgin. Be like, is this Greg Bach? I don't know. Is it Greg Bach? <laughs> Can you hear me? Can I hear you? I don't know. Can I hear you? Just oh. keep asking questions. Every playing with fun, yeah. fun with scammers. Yeah, exactly. Fun, fun with scammers. Because <laughs> you said you had something happen I did. to you. So I got this email. And again, I don't remember if it was my Amazon card or HBO or whatever. We're having problems, problems processing your payment. Yeah. There's a problem with your card and it looks legitimate. It looks like a legitimate email and so yep. yeah i clicked on it yep. i entered a new card within three days there were there were bogus charges on my card so how I much did they get from you it was only about 138 bucks so that, they they were having a slow day yeah i don't know uh but still then you have to cancel the card and you have to you know it's just it's the ha it's going through the hassle it's a pain in the neck one of the things they I, and i i was watching i can't remember what it was but they said <laughs> excuse me they said that if you get an email like that, always click on the email address because it's never just going to be like customer service or info at like, let's say HBO.com. It's not going to be that company, but it's not going to look like it's going to be, you know, 487XQ9 at something, something. Other. So it's, that's your, that's your heads up. Yeah. If you, if you get what looks like, if you think it's a, if you think it's a scam email, look at the email it's coming from. And it's usually going to be something really screwed up looking. And most of these companies, they're going to tell you up front, we're not going to take your credit card information over email, social security. Do not give that stuff out. Ever. If, you know, they have other means, you're usually going to a secure website and going through encryption and whatnot. Right. And that you can tell with a little lock. Yes, exactly. That's, that's in the exactly. upper left-hand corner. Exactly. I, I always, I just always worry about, about the elderly who are not necessarily tech savvy. Yeah. I know that people, that's shocking to some that. People my age are not always up on everything. So you're not elderly though. I'm 63. I'm I'm on I'm officially a senior citizen. I know, but you're not elderly. There's a difference between senior citizen and elderly. Senior well, citizen is like your age. Elderly is like, I remember when, <laughs> I remember when Truman <laughs> dropped the bomb. Gosh, thank you. I feel like a spry young thing of well, you know, five. There you go. Exactly. You're All welcome. Right. I, I appreciate that. I'm not gonna scam you on compliments, that's for sure. Thank you so much, Greg Buck. All right. When we come back, Deer Camp stories, stories from Deer Camp, only good stories. We want this to be a fun, upbeat, appropriate, appropriate, yes, and no naughties, uh, please, because we don't want Calvin to have to go rushing for the dump button and make sure everything's cleared up. Johnny Watermelon will be joining us when we come back, so stay with us. You're listening to As Goes Wisconsin on the Civic Media Radio Network. Good morning. Welcome to As Goes Wisconsin. Jane Matt Mayor, 
In for Kristen Bry, Calvin on the board, Greg Bach with me in studio, and joining us, our friend and colleague, bringing props and sound effects. <laughs> Our very own Johnny Watermullen. Thank you, you so much for joining sure. us, Sure. How are you doing, Jane and Greg? Thank you for having me on today. Well, I'm certainly more awake now with the blaze orange that you're wearing. If was, you're, if you're I, watching I on the stream, that should really grab you. Yeah, you you can definitely see Johnny Watermullen right now. It's He's very he's very here. He's I very, thought I'd get in costume for you guys today when you invited me in to do this little segment. I thought, you know what? I'm going to go home and get a couple props. <laughs> so I'm in my blaze orange today. And safety first when you're out in the field with firearms. That's man. right. That's the key. So, that's right. So, so you, that's where I got that. So you hunt, you hunt with firearms. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I bow hunt and crossbow and I do firearms. So. He just, yeah, he just, just got a deer. Yeah, I just got a deer with my crossbow uh, a couple weeks ago. <laughs> I don't know why that's, I don't know. Like crossbow is such a, a movie Renaissance weapon thing. A, a yeah. medieval. A, yeah, like a movie weapon to me. Like, <laughs> like Game of Thrones gather the general. crossbow. We're, we're taking the wall by night. Oh, we're gonna get a deer. These these I, compound crossbows that they make now are remarkable. They're they're incredible. They're like shooting a gun, really. They're they have so much energy behind that bolt, is what it's called, not the arrow, but a bolt in a crossbow. And I got a cute little story for you as long as we're on the crossbow thing. Sure. I was in my stand uh the other day and, and patiently waiting for this deer to come in, and a little chickadee landed right on the broadhead. Now, those broadheads are literally razors, okay. So they're very, very sharp. And he grabbed onto that thing. Oh, my. And just looked at it and went, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> And then he flew up the bolt about six inches away from my face. And I thought, my God, how cool is this? And he's looking at me. He knows I'm a critter. And he's going, cheep, 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 cheep. And he looks. And I go, it can't get any better. He flies up and lands on my head. Oh, Johnny. Boop. Yeah, it was just so cool. You know, it was really a back to nature thing. It was such a kumbaya moment. And you don't get that unless you're bow hunting. Well, you're in a stand like that, it, being quiet, it, camoed up. Yeah. Exactly. We had to, we talked about hunting a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And uh, another texture had shared with us the same thing. He said, there's nothing better than being up in a stand. And he actually hangs a bird feeder. Yeah. Yeah. My friend to Todd him. does that. So, occasionally, yeah. so he can. Yeah, they you know, have the, a lot of nature. interaction with the birds. And, and, a, and another quick little story is I was out in the same stand uh, last year, and it was getting a little bit dark. It was still, like you could see, but on my um, on my compound bow, I have sights that have lights on them, okay? Sure. So just you could see a little bit when it gets right before quitting time. And I'm sitting there, and I'm just quiet as a mouse. There's nothing going on. And I unbelievable an owl came in with his talons out trying to grab at that that lighted sight oh and it scared the hell oh, out of me i mean it it really did and it, at the last moment it it turned and landed on the branch next to me and i was just like my heartbeat went up and i've seen a lot of critters in the woods that thing really scared me it was so weird and they're silent flyers. I don't know if you know this about, about owls. Very quiet. But they're very, very quiet. They're so stealth. And I was just sitting there minding my own business. And this owl comes in with both talions coming in for that that sight. And what? was like, holy mackinoli. What do you think he thought it was? I think he thought it was some kind of uh, a little bird uh, of prey or, or there like eyes a squirrel or, or something. He yeah. thought they were eyes. There was a reflection in the, in the setting sun, maybe a squirrel or something. But I got to tell you, that uh, that set me straight, and I was kind of done. <laughs> he sat there for about 20 seconds, maybe 30 seconds, and he took off, uh, kind of looked at me and did that crazy owl neck thing that they do. It's like, and don't it's like, ever man. come to my neighborhood again. I know, it's like I was trespassing, you know, so um, he, he straightened me out. Oh, man. well, that was, I bet that. was that, a scary moment. I bet. Yeah, it's kind of weird. That, that, I bet that woke you up. Yeah, it, well, it really Oof. did. I was glad, and I was just bragging about that to my buddy Todd when I went back to deer camp, and I'm, I'm telling him the story, and he's just like, wow, that's never happened to me. And it's like, that was the first time for me, dude, and I've been in the woods for a long time on a lot of occasions, well, so that was really cool. And even having the bird land on your head. Yeah. I mean, come on. I mean, that's that, just, that just doesn't happen. You know, it was such a peaceful moment with that chickadee. I was telling my friends how spiritual and kind of a kumbaya thing that was, and the reverence and the, and the non-threatening posture of that little bird. It's just like, you know, he, he knew I was a living creature and, and it, we just kind of had like this little bonding moment and he was cool. And then a little shortly while after that, a red squirrel came up the tree and went right behind me, right behind my neck and my ear and was checking me out. And they, they do what they call kind of what we call kind of bitching. And they, they, beep, 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 and he was upset that I was kind of in his turf. And I said, you know what? The gig's kind of up. 
So then I, I packed up my stuff and I went. You're home. not afraid they're gonna bite you? Well, not really. I, I mean, can't they're figure out if the animals love you or hate you. I think they're into me, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I attract all kinds of critters when I'm up there. It's so much fun to see all the different uh, animals that come through. You know, the uh, raccoons, the rabbits, all, all the blue jays. Uh, you know, anything that I've even seen coyotes come through. Um, it's just a lot of fun. I saw a couple of bear and just. It's very interesting to be that close, that quiet, and just be part of that whole uh, interactive circle of of nature and not being in a threatening way. Yeah, it's just a beautiful thing to bow hunt. That, that's so. That, that's really yeah. that's yeah, really, really cool. cool. Eight, yeah. four, if you want to share a deer camp story, eight four four nine six seven two seven eight nine eight four four nine six party. You can call and or text. Would love to hear your deer camp stories. Now, Johnny, you're leaving on Thursday for uh, deer camp. Where yep. do, where do you hunt? I, I have had the privilege to hunt at a, a a place in Buffalo County. Okay, so I've got a very good friend that I've had for a long, long time. His name is Glenn Ponky. Him and his son Austin allow me to hunt their property for the last 38 years. Wow. And if anybody, you deer hunters out there, you know how prized it is to be able to hunt in that territory. Buffalo County. So now this is this is way up north and it's right along the river. It's, it's right actually along- it's all it's actually west. Well it's it's more west. Northwest. It's on the Mississippi River. Yeah, yeah. it's northwest. So if you know where lacrosse is for your geographical marker, take about another say 60, 70 miles north on the Mississippi. That's Buffalo County. Okay. So it's been known for a long time to, to produce these incredible bucks. And I think it has something to do with the minerals in, in the soils and the rock formations uh, and just the plant life there. But it's got a long history of producing huge bucks. So I, I just got a picture the other day of a guy that did a bull kill up there, 16 points. I mean, that thing was massive. It was a huge body deer. It was the biggest buck I've ever seen get harvested out of that area. It's just incredible. And, and I got to tell you, Austin and Glenn have shot a lot of big deer. I was lucky enough to harvest a nice one a few years ago, but Austin is the go-to guy at deer camp. If you want to, if you want to have a good shot at a nice deer, yep. hang around with Austin because he really knows his deer hunting stuff. He can really push. He drives. He's a g- quick gun. He's just a f- lot of fun to hang out with. Well, that's really cool. How on earth do you get a, an animal that large out of the woods? <laughs> well, here's the thing. Okay. So at that point during gun season, it's a little bit different than bow season because they're a little more threatened. They, they smell all the scent in the air. They hear all the hunters and that sort of stuff. They're off their natural patterns and they're just kind of running around trying to get to a safe place. A lot of them park until they get pushed. And that's why deer hunters do drives. Right. Okay. But for the most part, they can do a couple of things where the girl deers go. (laughs) And what they're saying is, hey, nice buckaroo, what are you doing tonight? And Are you busy later? Are you busy? <laughs> Should have had Calvin pull up some sexy music. I just, you know. Why, hello, Miss Doe. I'm ready to go. And they get together. So that's the kind of thing. So that's the mating in the rut season is what they call when they're in rut. And they're chasing each other around uh, trying to make whoopee. So when they get out of their regular patterns, their senses of security and they take more risks when they want to breed okay sure so they're out of their natural kind of uh safeguard elements and the bucks start to do stupid stuff okay they're not thinking they're they're not well they're thinking, normal they're not patterns. thinking with their head yeah i mean the thing is, is that, 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 that <laughs> just shows how, it thing. just shows how we're all connected as men yeah, involved right. in that thing we're like i shouldn't go in that house right now but man i might make out with a girl right here we go i shouldn't buy her a drink but i think i'm, I think gonna, I'm gonna, gonna do it anyway it ends up yeah so that's how that thing happens. And um, we, we've just been so fortunate in that piece of property and with those guys uh, to, to really have successful hunts over the years. And uh, we're just uh, just really lucky to have that spot. So, well, but, you never answered my question, though. Oh, I'm sorry. With, with, a, with a with a 16-point buck. Yeah. Do you, do you use an ATV to get it out of there? You, you would have to because it was a really big body deer. And I'll tell you, the cliffs during the bluffs, it's right on the Mississippi River. It must be okay? so beautiful. It, it is an incredible place to, to, uh, to spend some time in. But the cliffs, the vertical degree, r- literally are about 30 to 40% in some of the easy places, okay? Now, these drivers have to, to walk up these cliffs to drive the deer to the standers. So it's incredibly hard. So that's wow. why the young guys in camp get nominated to do that. Now we all did enough of that, but now, now the older dudes like me, we were standers and we sit on top of the ridge 
And it's very difficult. And yes, to answer your question, we use a lot of ATVs and ropes. Yeah, you Most have of to. the time, we pull them down the ridge. Okay. Once in a while, if they're close up to the top, we'll we'll pull them out. But uh, yeah, we we use uh, we use ATVs. We're talking deer camp stories. Johnny Watermelon, our colleague here at Civic Media, is heading up to deer camp on Thursday. If you want to share yours, you can call and or text at 844-967-2789. So what is the biggest deer you've ever gotten? And what is the biggest deer you've ever seen gotten that wasn't gotten by you? Uh, the biggest one I ever got was, uh, we'll call it a 10 point. He was missing one little tiny because he was a fighter and it was during kind of the rut scene. But uh, I shot a really nice deer off of Glenn's property several years ago. And it's actually mounted in kind of his bar area there. And that's probably the biggest one that I ever got. And it was a very big deer. I just so was so happy and, and proud to harvest that animal. And then the biggest one I've ever seen come off of that particular piece of property was shot by Austin. And, and it was really about a 12 point deer. So it was a big buck had long tines and it was a big body deer. So it was <laughs> just that really, like they're husky. Oh, they're, <laughs> all the ladies it's love it when they're husky. Fat deer, they got big the big, He's big, big thrown bold. out necks, you know, they got the big husky blown out necks. Yeah. So uh, those are some of the, those are some, some of the big ones. And there's a, there's quite the mounts in that, in that area that uh, Glenn's got this nice bar area and there's a lot of deer hanging up there. Wow. And, and we're just, we're fortunate to harvest a lot of does and, and take some bucks and the rules change a little bit from year to year where the guys will say, you know what, this year we're only taking basket six or we're only taking eights or that kind of thing. Okay. Wait, what or, is it? Say they again. we're only taking what six? Uh, basket six is kind of like what they call a little basket on the antlers. Okay. It's like a little, it kind of shapes like in a little basket. Okay. Or, you know, the guys might say, you know what, this deer for deer management, we don't want to shoot anything less than an eight or something like that. Or sometimes they'll say, you know what, let's keep in good communication. Everybody's got cell phones, this, you know, now, um, you know, we're going to take half a dozen does or whatever the number is. And then we're going to, uh, we're going to kind of settle down and re reassess Regroup. the deal. Regroup. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Yeah. 844-967-2789, 844-96-PARTY. Share your deer camp stories with us. We got just a couple of minutes. Can we get a quick one in? And then we'll we'll share more after the after the break. Sure. Do you want me to tell a quick story now? Real, real quick. Okay, fine one. It's uh, the five spirit deer. I was in my stand that I've been in for years. And these guys were driving some deer. And I saw them coming up the ridge. And I thought, okay, get ready, Johnny. Here it is. And there he was. And, I, and I've done this several times. I had my 30-odd six with me with a scope. It was a bolt action. Here come the deer and they kind of stop right underneath me. It's like, I got to go open sights. Can't get them in the scope. Next thing I know, I find the first one, squeeze it off. Bam, bam, bam. And I'm shooting these deer and I'm thinking we're going to be done. We're going to be in early season. We're going to the hot tub. It's going to be great. Get down there get up, and everybody's going, Hey, you know, Johnny, you must've, you, you know, you did a great job. Right. right. Go down there. Not a single deer, not a drop of you blood. You missed all of them? I missed five deer. So when Joe Clayfish tells about people missing deer, that was my <laughs> humble moment. And I call that the five deer spirit, five spirit deer story. So, <laughs> bummer. Sometimes they get away. Sometimes they get away. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back. You're listening to As Goes Wisconsin on the Civic Media Radio Network. Good morning. Welcome to As Goes Wisconsin. Jane Matt there in for Kristen Bry, Calvin on the board, Greg Mock and Johnny Watermelon with me in studio I highly recommend you jump on the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter. Johnny not only dressed up in his blaze orange, he brought props. As we're talking about deer camp and heading up to deer camp, he's leaving on Thursday to go up around to around La Crosse. Looks Buffalo County. Buffalo County. It looks yep. just beautiful up there. What other deer camp stories can you well, can we uh, share on the radio without getting in sure. trouble? Sure. Well, when I was a younger man, there was probably some stuff that was a little more um, outside of GP, but we'll we'll stick to the the uh, GP stuff here. Um, you know, mostly they're they're field stories. I'll I'll give you another one here that I was I was in the uh, Alpha One of what they call the fingers of the ridges there, and uh, Kettner, a guy by the name of Mike Kettner, was doing a little drive with Glenn, and they were pushing these deer, and all of a sudden I hear here they come. You know, and they're just, I could like, something's happening. Yep. So I, you know, they're I on the perk move. up, they're moving. And sure enough, uh, two does and a nice buck came running out towards me and they damn near ran me over, Jane. I mean, they, I, I got down on one knee to kind of protect myself because they were coming hard. They did. They had no idea I was there. 
Okay, these deer were just running for they their lives because yeah. they were scared that that, that Glenn and, and yep. Mikey were pushing them. So, and I had my uh, automatic shotgun at that time, and um, I was fortunate enough to harvest all three of them. So I got a trifecta. No that thing. kidding. Yeah. Bam, bam, bam. So that that was a that was an opposite of the five <laughs> spirit <laughs> deer deal. Yeah. So I, I was pretty fortunate there. So you know that's one cute story, and then the other one that I think comes to mind is I was hunting with uh, Glenn's dad. Kenny, which is a fabulous guy. Um, he, we were in his, his blind or his stand, I guess we'll call it. And uh, Glenn pushes a, just a huge buck, man. He goes, here he comes. He's a big one, you know, and, and he's got this deer on the run that runs right by us. And it was a bitterly cold day that day. And uh, Kenny, you know, he's, he's the senior deer hunter. So he gets first shot at everything, right? Sure, sure. Okay. And he, he kind of lifts up his gun. And he, he can't pull the trigger and I'm going, shoot him, Kenny, shoot him. And he, he goes, he just goes, I, I can't, my fingers are froze. I, oh no. And the thing's kind of, you know, turning get away. away. So I, I lift up my gun and by then it was just a little bit, kind of a long shot and let one go. And you know, the deer got away. So anyway, they, well, you know, <laughs> some of them are always going to get away. Yeah. So it's, you know, sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't, but that was a great story. Uh, you know, showing that these deer are, are very elusive. They're, they're moving a lot faster than you think. And, uh, you know, it's just a lot of fun to be out in the field and, and they have those experience with all the guys at deer camp. See, I would love, I would love to go sit up in somebody's stand and hang a bird feeder and hang out, you know, yeah. for, for four hours. Right. Just to be, as you said, to be part of that whole cycle of nature and being mm -hmm. able to be there as a, as a quiet observer. If you want to come over to my house and sit in the backyard, that's fine. We got I don't birds. Think it's quite the same. <laughs> I mean, we got birds. I mean, so we don't need deer. I can I can get one of those things and just walk across the, the yard and be like, I, I have a bird feeder too. I, well, I'm just <laughs> look, you propose that you have a, You're a, offering a, options. Yes. I, I appreciate I'm that. I'm offering hope as it's, Joe Sapecki. That's so nice of you, Greg Buck. Yeah, I'm here to Really, well, really appreciate it. You know, that. that leads me into another story about a good friend of mine, Todd. His dad used to deer hunt out of his kitchen window. Okay. Yeah. When you when you gasp like that, I think it's actually legal. Uh, I'm not sure the whole rules, and I'm not going to divulge too much here. But um, this guy, he was such a cool dude, and he, he couldn't move around very well. Okay. Okay. And um, he would have a cup of coffee and sit at his kitchen table with a mirror. He would have the news on and the TV and he'd be watching TV every once in a while. He'd lift up a little mirror and look back at the pond where the potato pile was. And if a deer would come in, he'd open up the kitchen window and harvest his animal and then go, Hey, you kids, go get him. Go, go get that deer for me. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So it was kind of a cute little story about what happened. No, there. I won't. Well, what, what have you found, Johnny, because you've been doing this for a long time. As far as the younger generations of hunters, are, are you seeing, because numbers are down, yeah. at least as far as the number of licenses, I think, that, that are getting issued. They are. It's, it's, a, it's a dying breed, really. Is it is it because of chronic wasting disease? Is it the I expense? That, is it um, just a combination of all these things? I think that has something to do with it, Gene. But I think, a, a, you know, the big part of that equation is the aging hunter. Okay? So a lot of folks are just kind of aging out of this process and they're not reintroducing it to the younger generation. Okay. And, and hats off to uh, Joel Clayfish and Danielle for having their program and, and reintroducing this great sport and, and all the different sports that are available in the state of Wisconsin. What a great place to, to grow up and to have this ability to, sure. to be able to harvest your own uh, food like that. So, but I think it's just, got, you know, a lot of things are going on. The, the chronic wasting disease, certainly doesn't help it makes me a little uh, iffy a so little twitchy. We're, we're always sure. uh processing our own deer because we want to be very very careful about yep. how that happens yep. uh the aging population and the regulations it just all, all this combination of stuff and young people like uh you know i just it, why hurt the nice little deer you know kind of thing um it, I, I all those things kind of come into play jane that's what i think is going on there well and i think it's interesting that you say that because we were talking about car, uh, car deer crashes mm -hmm. which are just up massively because the 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 deer herd is pretty big in wisconsin yeah it's it's huge i okay, mean we so we need rise. we need to we need to do some thinning out <laughs> well, you guys that, that was the question i had if, if the deer hunting population dwindles and dwindles what is going to be the management what is going to be the the means of control of keeping that population down then yeah. Well, that, that's a great question. And, and I think that's uh, 
something that I think a lot of us uh, from the, uh, the hunter, the guy that's in the field, I have some challenges. And I think a lot of the people that I hunt with have some challenges the way the, the DNR is managing these herds. I think a lot of it's knee jerk reaction. I think they're guessing a lot, you know, cause they, well, how do they get all these numbers and data? Do they fly overs and, and count these deer, you know, it's, it's a, how, how it's are a, they coming up with snapshot, that number? You know? Yeah. So I, it's just a frustrating thing and how they're going to manage it. I don't know, Greg, that's a, that's a yeah. great question. Yeah. Well, thank you so very much for joining us at the last minute. My pleasure. Johnny Watermelon, be safe up north when you leave on Thursday Where's for Deer Camp. Do you, do, you hear, do you hear something, Jane? Where do you hear? Ah, oh. ah, that, means uh, Todd, so, that means Todd Albus show is coming up next. Oh, I thought, it was a, <laughs> I thought there was a randy deer in the forest. <laughs> no, stay, stick around. The news is next, followed by the Todd Albus show from noon to 2 o'clock. Stay with us. This is As Goes Wisconsin. You're listening on the Civic Media Radio Network.